it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Probably sponsored by Farmers Union Ice Coffee. Hi guys, this video is going to be all about naming and drawing alcohols and using the alcohol functional group. So that's the uh, also sometimes known as the hydroxyl, the OH in um, organic chemistry. So I'm going to be starting firstly by naming these three organic um, alcohols over here on the right. Okay, so. Again, following um, our outline from the first video and the introduction to organic chemistry, we identify the longest carbon chain, which in this case is four. Sorry about the um, dripped paint there. Okay, so we've got four carbons out in the longest um, line here. We've got an OH, an alcohol function group, and nothing else there. Okay, so we number the carbon atoms based on the one closest to the function group. So one, two, three, four. Okay, and because there's four on the second is the alcohol group. So this is butan 2 ol All right, so our alcohol function group, when it's the only one there, that gives us our name by itself on the end, the OL, four carbon atoms in the chain, the alcohol is on the second one, okay? This one here, again, we've got three carbon atoms there. So it's, um, it's not eth, sorry. <coughs> it's getting late in the day. It's three, so it's pro. All right, so it's propan, okay? And then it doesn't matter which end you number from, one, two, three. So we've got three alcohol groups and they're on the one, two, and three carbon atoms. And because there's three of them, we put tri in the front. So it's propan, one, two, three, triol. Now this is a um, very important um, molecule in year 12 organic chemistry. This is also known, uh, the commercial name is glycerol. All right, and this is used when we look at triglycerides, okay? It's a very thick, viscous liquid. It's got lots of polar OH groups which can hydrogen bond to each other, so there's a lots of strong interaction holding the molecules together, so it makes a very thick liquid which um, flows very slowly, much more slowly. It's a bit like honey, really. Um, finally, we've got this one down the bottom here. Again, we've got, um, we identify the function groups. This time we've got an OH and we've got an alkene in there. So, um, this time the alcohol doesn't take preference for our naming, the alkene does. And this time the alcohol is going to be um, at the front of our name. So we count the number of carbon atoms in the chain, which is five, which makes it pent, and we number from the end closest to the functional group down here. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're going to name our functional group of the alkene in there. So it's going to be pent. To in, all right. So that's our carbon channel, and then we've got an alcohol group on the second one, but we can't do an OL on the end anymore. So what we use for this is we um, put now that side chain at the front, like we would in a normal organic molecule, and so it is two hydroxy. So remember, I said the OH group is sometimes also called the hydroxyl group. So it's two hydroxy pent two in. Okay, so this is telling us that on the second carbon we've got an OH group, and in the second carbon we've also got a double bond, and that's 2-hydroxypent2N. So that's how you name an organic molecule if the alcohol group isn't the only functional group in there. Conversely, on the other side, if we then go to draw them, okay, we follow the same rules as I did um, in the previous video. So first thing is easy thing to do is always start with your carbon chain. So we've got propan, two holes, so we want three carbon atoms in there. So just draw out your three carbon atoms as your chain, your skeleton, okay? And then start looking at your functional groups and then your side chains. So it's propan, two ol, which implies on the second carbon, we've got an OH group, okay? And it's two methyl, which means on the second carbon, we've also got a methyl group. Then you put in the rest of your bonds to make four on every carbon, like this. And that is 2-methylpropan-2-ol. This is also known as tert-butyl ter alcohol or tertiary butyl alcohol. And um, you'll probably come across this in the, in the lab when you might be doing some esters or some other things. It's quite common to use tert-butyl alcohol. But all you've got to do is name your three carbon atoms, one, two, three. The second one has the alcohol group, OH. We've got a methyl group on the second carbon as well. There's our structure. Butan 1, 2, diol. We again identify the number of carbon atoms you've got. Butan means four. So we put in our four carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, like that. We identify there's an alcohol functional group. So it's diol is two, and that tells us where it is on the first and the second carbon atoms. So there's an OH group on that one, and there's an OH group on that one. That's the first and the second. 
then you fill out the rest of the molecule like this. Okay, four bonds around every carbon, that is key, and that is your butan 1,2 diol. Final one we've got is another example like we had over here. Okay, where now we've got the alcohol functional group out the front because there's another functional group that takes preference for the name. So hex, uh, hex is going to be six carbon atoms. So we put in our six carbon atom chain like this. All right. We start identifying the functional groups. On the second one, we've got an alkene. So from the second one, we need a double bond in there. Okay. And on the third group, we have our hydroxy. So third carbon, we have our hydroxy functional group. So we put our OH in there, and then you fill up, that one's already got four carbon atoms, this one's got three, so we need a hydrogen there. Make sure every carbon has four bonds around it, and you've drawn your molecule of 3 hydroxy hex 2 n Alright, now there's a separate video which talks all about oxidation of alcohols and talks about some of the properties of them. So I suggest you look at that. This one's purely just about drawing and naming the structures. Okay? Make sure you understand what a primary, secondary, and a tertiary alcohol are and how they differ in their structures. What might be useful is to come back to this one, and now you've got these six structures. Identify which ones are primary, which ones are secondary, which ones are tertiary. That might be quite useful for you. Now, if you don't want to know what the answers are, just pause this for a second while you work it out. And I'll let you know that this one up here is a secondary alcohol. This is primary, well it's got primary and secondary in there, but it's mostly primary. This one is a tertiary alcohol, because there's no hydrogen over here, we've got a double bond. Okay. This one here is a, a tertiary alcohol as well. Right, this one's primary and secondary, and this one here is also a tertiary alcohol. Okay. So hopefully you're able to work those out. Uh, it's good practice to be able to do that. All right, as always, if you've got any questions, just ask. Main thing with these is just practice, practice. Find as many as you can, find some worksheets, look through SASTA revision guides, uh, your Chem Essentials book, whatever you need, and just practice doing as many of these as you can. As always, if you've got any questions, just ask. Thanks, guys.